I'm up to the stage. Thank you. Thank you so much. Aren't you blessed by the worship this morning? I always say worshippers, are they, they are the angelic voices. Angelic voices, really. Praise God for them. And praise God for each and every one of you. Praise the Lord. Just let me organize myself. Okay. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good. It's good to be back. And, um, you know, it's good to have this opportunity, this honor to, to share the Word of God. Now, um, I don't know why today it just comes to my mind. I just can't help but to share this. Um, in the Old Testament, when the Israelites were bitten by the snake, and, 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 and they, they were very sick, you know. As we know, Israelites, they, they are famous for the compl- complaints. And, um, so, and, and God asked Moses to, to make a bronze snake and put it on the cross. And every time they got beaten, they look at the cross, they look at the bronze snake, they'll be healed. And um, what, what I, I don't know how you see it. How I see it is this way. God asked the Israelite to look at the bronze snake, not to lift up, not to give glory to the bronze snake. God wants us to see that snake is being nailed on the cross. It's no more power over their lives. It's nailed. Your cancer is nailed on the cross. All your illness, your heart problem, your marriage problem, all your problems are nailed on the cross. They have no more power over your lives. And when you look at Jesus, you see his resurrection power. You see his healing. You see the freedom that Christ gives us through his resurrection. Church, we are no longer bound by sickness, by problems. Every time when life is so overwhelming, I know MCO has overwhelmed the challenges emotionally, mentally, physically, financially, you name it. But let's remember, it's all on the cross. God has given us the freedom. God has given us that abundance in Christ and through Christ. But today I'm not preaching on this. Okay. All right. Now today I want to share my thoughts huh, on the master porter's hand. Can I have the, the PowerPoint on, this, on the screen? I received this on Friday. It is another confirmation that God wanted me to share on Isaiah 64 verse 8. It's a beautiful verse. It says that, But now, O Lord, you are our Father. You are, or we are the clay, and you, our porter. And all of us, not some, but all of us are the work of your hand. And that's Isaiah 64 verse 8. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We are here not by chance. Our lives are not by chance. But with your divine plan, your divine appointment. We thank you, O Father God, that we are the clay. And yet, Lord, you make us into what we are and who we are today. Reflecting, O God, your glory your image. Father, we just want to commit this time to you. We thank you so much, oh God, for the beautiful that, that worship, oh God, that bring us to your presence, that connect us to you, oh God, so closely, so closely, oh God, to you and with you. So Father, we just pray that you continue, oh God, to be with us here this morning, oh God, wherever we are, at home, in church, everywhere. Father, we pray that you be with us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. In Isaiah 64, if you notice, 
Isaiah acknowledged God, acknowledged three characteristics of God. He called God, Lord, you are the Father, you are the Porter. That, that sense of belonging, that personal touch, that connection, that vertical connection, relationship with God the Almighty. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. That's why when we read the Word of God, try to chew on it, think, think about it, and see what God has in it for us. God's Word is never bored. Every day you read, there's some refreshment there. So I pray today, all of us be refreshed, be energized, be recharged again through the Word of God. Now, can we have the next PowerPoint? Ah, what do we see here? Potteries, pots, vessels. Huh? Okay, now can you see which one is you? Which one is you? Can you see yourself in the midst of these beautiful, beautiful vessels? Which one is Elder Chairman Simon? I think the biggest one. <laughs> huh? And which one is Uncle Rumi? <laughs> okay, and, and uh, JG, and uh, An uh, Angie, Angeline, you know, can you see yourself there? Now, I saw a vision of this, actually. Huh? Not, of course, not this picture. Huh? I saw a vision of jars with different sizes during one of our Wednesday night miracle meeting. All right? And I was sitting somewhere there. Huh? And, um, and, and, and in the vision, I saw clay, you know, clay vessels of various sizes, shapes, and designs, something like this. And the message came saying that God is the porter and we are the clay. He's the master of it all. None of them look the same. Okay, they are so unique. They are so beautiful. Huh? So well designed. Okay, so that, that was the message God said to us. He's the master of it all. He's the porter and we are the clay. Praise the Lord. So we are all in a very trusted, skillful hand, you know. God desires for a purpose. God desires for a purpose according to His will. And no one, no one is underutilized or useless. Now, I have um, a bottle. I have something to show you, actually. I shouldn't have said it. I get my beloved husband, Johnny to come, and um, now, on his, on his um, left hand, you see this big, beautiful bottles, uh, glass bottles, and on his right hand, you see this little tiny container. Now, what I'm trying to say is, you never judge a container by the size. You, you never say that the bigger one is better than the smaller one, or the smaller one is less useful than the bigger one. Because when you see what is in my hand, <laughs> okay, I have some toothpicks and I need a container to keep all this. I can't put this into the big container because it will be inappropriate. But if I were to put a toothpick into this container, it fits in perfect and well. So the message is, God has the perfect and ideal vessel for everything. So the big bottle has its own purpose and the small container has its purpose for something ideal. Praise God. And the same with us, isn't it? Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. So when Samuel, when Samuel was asked to anoint Jesse's son to be the next king of Israel, and he was looking at the sons. He was looking for the muscular, the tall, handsome sons of Jesse's until God revealed, until God revealed the youngest son, the shepherd boy, David. And I wrote here, I said, God mold and shaped David with bold and brave, uh, bonus and brave 
be strong and courageous, love and faith in God. He mold and make David into a king. And we see in Psalms 139, verse 14, David said, I praise you, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful, and I know that, and I know that full well. It was how David acknowledged God. It was how David praised of his maker. He said, I am wonderfully and beautifully made. So none of us are, uh, you know, callously or chin chai chin chai, you know, si tana. No, we are all fearfully, wonderfully, well designed, very delicately made. And Job, Job, when he went through the severe tests and trials of his life, in Job 10.8, he says that, your hands, oh God, your hands shaped me and made me. As painful, as you know, difficult, as hard as he was at that time, Job he acknowledged that God, you are the maker. He didn't complain. So God the master's hand, God has personally molded and shaped each and every one of us with his power, with his authority, with his sovereignty. And in the Bible, we, you, God says, let us make mankind. Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness. So we are, we are all God's unique, special, and non-duplicate workmanship. You can't find another Jacqueline. You can't find another Jeremy. No, what is his name? Vincent. You can't find another Vincent. You can't find another Johnny. You can't find another Brother Lee. We are all unique. We are all special in our own way. So through God's creation, we see that God is a God of plan. He's a God of design. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of order. God never put the mouth on the forehead or the nose on the chin or, or maybe the legs on the shoulder and hands on the hip. No. He created us after his own image, perfect in all manners. That's our God. And that's how he made us. So as I meditate on the vision, I see, I see something. First, I see relationship. I see relationship between the master porter and the clay. I see intimacy. That's intimacy. That's intimacy between the porter and the clay. They are inseparable. The clay, when you see the clay, you see the porter. When you see the porter, you see the clay. The clay has never left. It never left the porter's hand. Now, as you, as you think of it, the intimacy, the relationship between the porter and the clay, that reflects our life, our relationship with God. Is that intimate? Is that intimate? Is that beautiful? In Isaiah, Isaiah 49, 16, God says, See, I have engraved you on the palms of my hand. Your walls are ever before me. Is that close with God? God engraved you and I on the palms of his hand. And the song of songs says that, I am my beloved, and my beloved is mine. That belonging, no one can separate us. I belong to God and God belongs to me. He is mine. He's mine and he's yours. 
Now in the Bible, David was called man after God's heart. So so special to be called, you know, David, the man after my heart. Abraham was called God's friend. And John, the disciple John, he was called the disciple that Jesus loved. It's so special. And what about you and I? What do God call us? God call us my children. My children. So God is our Father God. He's our Lord. He's our porter. He's our friend. He's our everything. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now, second thing I saw is that attentiveness. Attentiveness. The whole, the whole process of making the vessel, we notice that the porter, the porter is focused. His entire being, his eyes, his hands, his, his mind are fully concentrated, making sure there's no flaws, there's no mistake, there's no rough edges. It's perfect in every angle. God knows. God knows. The porter knows when to put pressure, when to squeeze and pinch, and when to relax. He knows what he's doing, and his attention on the pottery is 100%. And when it comes to the furnace of fire, the fire is not overheated or the pot will crack. So everything, everything is carefully designed, carefully made, carefully going through every process. And in his time, he made things beautiful. So we are what we are and who we are today because God has made us this way. The Bible says that, that, that God will not test us beyond our strength. The furnace fire is not overheated. God will not overtest us beyond our strength. And God is an attentive God. God is attentive. He hears and He responds to the prayer of His children. And that's God's attentiveness to us. We see this in the life of the Israelites. When they cry out to God day and night, the Bible says that God came and rescued them deliver them from the hands of the king Pharaoh. We see this in the midst of the storm. When the disciples call out to Jesus, he was there with them. He, he was there with them. So in our situation, as Jeji prayed this morning, you know, our health, our financial, our business, our marriages, our study, our family issues, when things, when situation is so overwhelming, remember, remember the intimate relationship we have with God, our porter, our Lord God Almighty is with us. He never leaves us nor forsake us. And remember that God, His eyes are upon us. His ears are open to our cry. He's attentive to us. There's a quote that says, those who leave everything in God's hand will eventually see God's hand in everything. If you learn to put everything in God's hand, and then you will see God's hand in everything. The more we look for God in our lives, the more we see Him. That's how intimate, that is how we see God in our lives. I have a testimony to share about this girl. Years ago, I ministered to this um, deaf, uh, not this one yet, uh, a deaf girl. And um, as I was praying for her, you know, God wanted her to, to forgive her parents. So when I told her she's deaf, so, you know, I signed to her and I said that you need to forgive your parents. And she started crying. She started crying. I didn't know her at that time, you know, just she came forth to be prayed for. And uh, she started crying. It was very heartbreaking to see a deaf cry. <laughs> we, we cry like that, huh? but when they cry, it really breaks your heart. You know? And, uh, and after, after she had settled down, because I didn't know what happened between her and the, husband, uh, and, the, and the parents, 
So when she finally settled down, she told me that when she was born, when the mom knew that she was deaf and mute, the mom was so devastated that she told everyone that she's dead. 我一个女死咗啊 ！You know, this daughter of mine is dead. So every time when the visitor came to their house, the mother would hide her either in the wardrobe or toilet until the visitors left. Now I don't know those days how she been through it, but it was like that. And then when she was bigger, the mom sent her to her auntie's house, and there she grew up, not in her own kampong, but in the auntie's house. And she is not to be brought to the house during Chinese New Year. So, you know. It's easy for us to say, but from a babyhood to childhood to you know teenage. So this girl, she grew up very messy. She entered into many wrong relationships, broken marriages, and you know, and her story went on. But I thank God. I thank God. God loves broken vessels. God loves broken vessels, and He looks for broken vessels because He can change change them. Into something out of nothing. It's so true when Jesus says, "I came not to seek for the those who are healthy, but I came to seek to look for those who are sick." Jesus came to look for you and I. Jesus came to look for broken lives. If you think that you are perfect, you don't need Jesus. But if today you still think that you need. Your life needs Jesus. Jesus will come to you. So when you are nobody to the world, it is then that you become somebody in the eyes of God. The world sees you as the cracked and broken vessel, just like that girl, good for nothing, according to the mom. Hey, 聋哑的，看 what can she do? So the mom totally rejected her, and good for nothing, dim and doom, ready to be thrown away. And God see, it is the time. It is when God see the value in you, and He's all ready to repair you, to reshape, to make, to remake your life. And that's how God make her life. Today she married to a husband who loved her so much. They serve God together, and they are working so well. They live a very happy, you know, and joyful life. And most importantly, they have this porter. The master porter in their lives. That's how God. That's how God made us from nothing to something, from nobody to somebody. I thank God. I thank God that this life was not wasted. I thank God that she came that day, and God ministered to her. So there are so many people who have testified of the second chance from God. Paul. Paul was a persecutor. He was a persecutor, and God changed him into the preacher of the gospel of Jesus. Peter, from denial to proclaiming his faith, the Peter that denied Jesus three times is the Peter that proclaimed his faith, proclaimed the repentant message of Jesus. My Bible, my my Bible friend, Bible school friends. They were drug addicts, and today they are pastors. They are pastors in different places, ministering the word of God to the people. Their life become a a life story, a living testimony to the world. God is the porter; He's looking for that broken vessel. He's looking for you. He's looking for me. No one, no one is underused. No one is useless. No one is rejected when it is in God's hand. When it is in God's hand, and and the list go on. So, if you are today where you are, tell yourself, I am beautiful. I am wonderful and fearfully made. I am useful. I am unique. I am special, and though there's no one like me, I am valuable. I am the reflection of God's glory, and that's my third thought.
the reflection. I see that relationship, that intimate relationship between the porter and the clay. And that reminds me of my relationship with my maker. And then I see God's attentiveness over my life, over your life, over our lives, over this, the life of this deaf girl. God was attentive. His ears are always open, 24-7. Jeremiah 33, 3, the hotlines of God. Call unto me and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that you knoweth not. God is ever ready to hear us. And we are the reflection of God. We often look at the pottery and we'll say, wow, so fine and delicate. You know, wow, wow, what a workmanship. You know, salute. Oh, that potter, whoever make it, you know, in Mandarin we say, so fine, so delicate, so, just so perfect, so beautiful. Yeah. So we are, we are the reflection of our master porter. Our lives, our conducts, the fruit and the characters that we bear speaks of God's glory. When people look at us, people say, praise God for this person. Praise God. You know, And today, he is so good. I always remember my mom. Uh, I, I think I shared before, I, I threw bowls, I threw plates. Huh? And uh, that, that was my temper before I was a Christian. And my mom said my mouth could hang 10 baskets. That was how hot temper I was. And God moved me into a teacher. <laughs> a teacher who needs patience and love. Imagine with that hot temper, with that temper, I become a teacher. Bin saya, mong people say. <laughs> I think that cane will become flowers. Uh, and, uh, but my mom, that night when I walked through that door, she told my dad, uh, Sui Gao, my family name, Sui Gao, Sun Zhe Ye, so wa sin ya, so leo bo pi ki leo, in Hokkien. No more temper. No more temper. That's how God. Changes when people look at us. They said, This person is so changed. And they give glory to God. Isn't it in the Bible, God says, When people look at your good work, they give glory to the Father? Our lives is a reflection of what, who God is in our lives. So I, I pray that let the world say, Heads off to your Jesus. Heads off to your Jesus. And, and not only that, through our testimony, as last week's sermon, which is so good, be the influencer. Let our life, let our life, our testimony, influence the decision of them to God's salvation. Be that influencer. Take last week's sermon. Take heed of last week's sermon. It's beautiful. God wants us to be that reflection. God wants us to be that influencer for Him. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so be the vessel that God has made you to be. Never compare. Never compare. Yan Bei, Yan Bei, Sei, Yan, Mandarin, Cantonese. You never compare, never complain, never compete. Never. Okay? So you are just who you are and what you are. You are the unique you. I cannot be JG. I look at him, I say, oh, he sings so well. He speaks so well. His hairstyle. I can't be him. I thank God I'm not a duplicate of JG. Otherwise, the world will become so bored if everybody looked like JG. <laughs> the guitarist, the drummer, you know, the preacher, the congregation, everybody, you look at me, I look at you, we are all JG. Uh, except the clothing la. <laughs> uh, except the clothing, okay? Uh, so it will be so how to call it bored. Everybody looks the same. Okay? No, but we are unique. We are unique. So never compare, never complain and never compete. Just be who you are and what you are. 
That's how God made you so unique. No one, no one is like you. You are so special. God has made her to be Christ-like, to be compassionate, to be devoted to Him, to do discipleship, and to love others. The furnace process takes time. But God will not just leave it there forever. It takes time for that porter to be, to be, uh, to be made further fine, strong, you know, the result makes us strong and, and, and lasting and mature. And that's the testing in our lives. If this life is without tests, if this life is without trials, I think all of us will become so proud, so self contented We don't need God. When I was in Taiwan, I remember asking this young girl, I say, "Do you need Jesus, ma? Do you, do you, you know, need, do you need Jesus in your life? No, I have everything. I always remember she said, "I have everything." God wants us to go through tests and trials. The pandemic time, the MCO time, the lockdown. All these are for a purpose. Romans 8, 28 is very familiar by now. All things work out good. See the word good for those who love God. So when you go through tests and trials, sing hallelujah. Sing the song, I raise a hallelujah, because that shows that you love God. If the tests and trials are from God, you sing hallelujah. God is making us mature, strong, and lasting. And the, the verse doesn't stop there. And are called by His purpose. Our master porter has a purpose in our lives. Tests and trials are not just for, for song song or for fun. God knows God knows what, is he, what he's doing. And in his time, he made things beautiful. I remember when I've been through the, the most difficult hours of my life, I always see myself when the storm overwhelmed me, when the storm came over me, and after the storm has passed through, am I still standing on the shore? Or I have been swept away with the storm of life. I thank God. By His grace, by His grace, by His mercy, I was still there. Not by myself, but with Jesus. He helped me through. He brought me through. And He carried me through that storm. So tests and trials are good for us to make us mature, to make us know, realize how much faith I put in God, how much I love God. As the song says just now, lead me to the cross. Jesus, you have won my heart. I want to pursue you. The tests and trials make us long for Jesus even more. We want Jesus even more. I want all of Him. We want all of Him. And that's, that's the test, that's the furnace of fire that God has put in our lives. So let's be the jars. Let's be the jars that that's Elisha asked the widow to do. Elisha asked the widow to fill, to fill up all the jars with oil. Brothers and sisters, today, today God wants to fill us, fill each and every one of us, fill NLCC, fill our friends with the oil of the Holy Spirit. God wants to anoint us, to empower us, to enable us to restore back our authority and our identity. God wants to heal and deliver us. God wants to raise us up and to send us forth to serve, to shine. For his glory. Be that just. Be that just that God can feel. 
with His Holy Spirit. If God has made you a teacher, I, I, I just wrote it down, this one. If God has made you a teacher, teach with His wisdom. If God has made you a worship leader, use that vocal to honor Him and bring His people before His presence. If God has made you a preacher, utter His word with authority and power above, proclaiming His message of love, of hope, of comfort, of healing, of forgiveness. If God has made you a businessman, listen, influence the marketplace with His given talent and favor. Show the world what happens when you partnership with God. When you involve God in everything you do, you will influence the marketplace. Bring God with you. Don't just bring your experience. Don't bring your expertise. Don't bring your whatever you need, your master, your diploma, your photo. Involve God. Show the marketplace. When you involve God, when you partnership with God, what happened? If God make you a housewife, then be a fantastic homemaker. Cook nice food. Do the house beautiful. Do a beautiful garden. If God make you a student, then shine for Jesus. Tell of His love with your fellow friends. Be the impactors. I have a story of broken vessel to share, which is this picture, actually. Um, let me see what time, <laughs> so that I don't overuse my time. It's 9.43. Okay, I will just cut it short. Look at this picture. This man has uh, two pots. One is perfect, and one is broken. So this broken vessel was very self-pity. He felt guilty that he's cracked. He thought, you know, every day, poor uh, 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 um, uh, good worker, this is a servant, okay? Uh, so he would have to carry the, the pots uh, from the stream, you know, or to the stream to get some water and then bring it to the master's house. Those days, lah, huh? And, but because it's cracked, so every time, you know, when the servant fill up the pots, it's full, but by the time it reached the master's house, this, the broken vessel will only left half. And, and that, that, that perfect vessel will be very happy, you see? You know, I, I, I'm so, I have no crack, you know, I'm the perfect um, port. So, you know, I, I serve 100%, huh? uh, fully utilized, okay? And uh, so one day, this broken vessel spoke to the servant. He said, I'm so sorry. I, I feel so guilty, you know, that, that I have wasted your energy. I have, I have wasted your effort, you know, every day you carry, and, and yet you never throw me away. You still use me. And uh, then the servant answered and said, Why do you say that? Why do you say that? Look at your side of the road, of the path. Beautiful flowers grow. And do you know what? Because of the flowers, because of you, I'm able to to." Cut, you know, pick the flowers and put the flowers on the master's table. I purposely put some seed on your side because I know you will help to water that seed, that side of your path. So broken vessel, don't be afraid of our flaws. Don't feel embarrassed or guilty or fall into self-pity. Let go and let God Take over our flaws. His hand makes wonderful things. So we go out boldly and shine for God's glory. Be like the prodigal son, as sorry as he was. He went back to his father's house. So do not let our scar go bigger and deeper. Our father is awaiting us. Be in the master porter's hand. Be in God's hand. And you know, Wonderful things will happen in your life. God is not done with us. God is still in the process of making us. So let go and let God. Let's pray. Hallelujah. Lord God, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are the master porter. 
We submit, oh God, we submit and surrender to your authority to mold and shape, to make and use us, oh God, for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Victoria, for such an encouraging 